Welcome back to Brands Hatch for the second free practice session for the Blancpain GT Series, the second Sprint Cup event of the year. We started at Misano on the Adriatic coast of Italy and Mercedes came away with the honours there, but they weren't fastest in the first free practice session this morning. That honour went to the number five Belgian Audi Club Team WRT R8 LMS. Marcel Fessler sharing with Dries Van Tour, the young Belgian racer who was quickest of all. And John Watson joining me in the commentary box. We reckon a new set of tyres was uh, involved in that very quick time indeed. Slightly interrupted session, but uh, they put down a very early marker. Very different this afternoon though, around the Brown Hatch Grand Prix circuit. A lot warmer, seven degrees more track temperature. The wind has been gusty, but it's still there. Well, there we've seen the outline of this. Basically, it's a nine corner Grand Prix circuit of Brands Hatch, 3.9 kilometers, 2.433 miles. And it is a roller coaster, as you can see from the graphic on screen. And that really doesn't tell you the full story because the first corner you approach is Paddock Hill Bend, and that is a real steep drop off. And then you go out into the countryside, down the Hawthorne Strait into the compression, then up around that wonderful right hand corner. Then you would make your return back to what would be the Indy Loop, they call it that these days, through Clearways Corner, my favourite corner on the racetrack. And I mean, overall, a pure joy to drive, to race on this Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. And also a pure joy for spectators who are here and watching on TV just to watch cars working with the gradient, the twist, the turn, the narrowness and the, the sort of dual nature of the circuit. We've got the Grand Prix Bowl, but the Grand Prix Loop is the bit where it really changes. And there is the Rinaldi Racing Ferrari 333 down at the dip of Dingledale, up to the corner, now known as Sheen, and then into Stirlings at the point of which We've seen a lot of cars coming out on this left-hander running wide. Looks very cautious within the lines. We won't see the quicker drivers staying within the lines. But on this outlap, it's about getting the heat into their tyres. And then they open it up as they come down Clark Curve onto Clearways. And Daniel Kalvitz really started to get a move on in that. Certainly the quicker of the two drivers, sharing with Alexander Matchell. And he propelled that up to second position in the Pro-Am class. Best in class was in 10th overall. They were four places further back. But yep. uh, the honours in that class to Bobalik and Gunor. There we get the view on board. The 333 Ferrari coming up into Druids. And a variety of lines. That's probably the most popular of those lines. Hug the curb all the way around. Then maybe get a little bit further to the right before you make the cut back for Graham Hill Bend. Don't overrun on the exit. You can put two wheels off. But four wheels off is a bit no-no. Then the short spent on Cooper Strait into Surtees. One of the few spots in the circuit I think is a viable overtaking. You can actually wrong foot a competitor there. Then this sort of what they call a straight, but it's a dog leg. Then you drop down into the compression of the bottom of fourth one straight. Then looking skyward, make your commitment. You can't see the apex until almost you're through the corner. Then the short run down to Westfield Bend, bumpy on the line. Ride the curb a little bit. Be careful on the outside. Don't get caught. And again, down. Another compression, Dingledale, then up the hill. Where's the apex at Sheen? There's it there. Then let the car float out, free it up on the exit, then back on the brakes, turn left, get the nose into the apex, watch the curb on the outside. It'll bite you if you abuse it. Then the run down into clearways, get the car positioned. Now make your turn on the throttle. The car floats all the way out to the outside, kisses the line, and then the natural arc brings it back to make your second apex. God, I'm... I'm Driving, I'm driving, Bruce. Well, I tell you, John, it's it's hard, so hard to watch that and not want to be out there driving a car. A lot of understeer there through Paddock Hill Bend for Daniel Kalvitz. Fastest lap so far is now Robin Fritz, 1 minute 25.532. The best this morning was uh, just 1.1 seconds quicker than that. But Robin Fritz back on board. He'd been injured earlier in the year, hurt himself just before the Bizarro race. Didn't compete in that, going very well. Now, just seeing the 333 Ferrari running wide over the curbs, another corner, Graham Hill Bend. We've seen a lot of cars going over the curbs there, John. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the one corner. I think that if anybody's going to get done for track abuse, it'll be on the exit of Graham Hill Bend. There are track sensors in that runoff area, and if you get all four wheels off the racetrack, then you are, if you do it once, you'll get a warning. Twice, you're going to be a, in front of the schoolmaster, and the third time, well, you'll get a drive-through penalty. Looking at the car that was fastest until a nanosecond ago, a sister Audi number one is now quickest. Christopher Meese, 1 minute 25.034, half a second better than the best but from Robin Fritz. But guess what? Robins is going better than his previous lap. He set the fast, the, his fastest first sector. And let's see if he can knit it together through the remainder of the lap coming up to Sterling's over the coast. But oh, again, we've seen go too wide, it gets choppy, and then the car wants to snap away, and that's where your heart rate either goes up or down. If you're going to ride the curb, you must ensure the car 
is pointing in a straight line, not have the back end sort of dancing over the kerb because that's where you can get into trouble. So Christopher Meese comes across the line, 25-0-3-4-3. The 3-3-3 Ferrari, Kilovitz has now gone second pick as fast as on the Pro-Am cars on the 125-0-8-5, 50 one hundredths of a second behind uh, the number one Audi driven by Christopher Meese. Well, that's very impressive because uh, when we saw him starting the lap at Paddock Hill Bend, he had far more understanding than he wanted. He was going down towards the kerb on the outside, clearly got it back together. The 98 uh, BMW, one of two, uh, in this race, in this race meeting, was seventh fastest this morning. Marcus Pautzler set the time late on, and uh, right now he's starting to wind himself up towards a quicker time. Not yet come from him, but uh, Antonio Felix da Costa in the sister car is up well inside the top ten. In fact, they're both in the top ten, so BMW's picking their way up the order. But at the moment, it's Audi from Pro-Am Ferrari from Audi, the top three. Well, the BMW and the Bentley, both sort of mid-engine, front-engine cars. Both look to ride the kerbs, particularly in Westfield Bend, reasonably well. You want a car that, if you're going to run the kerbs, sort of works with you. Some of the cars are a lot more lively when they see a kerb, and that's where it can get tricky. So watch this exit coming out. BMW Tidy. rides it like a Packard. Exactly. <laughs> Great phrase. Uh, just worth pointing out, we had Lamborghinis winning, uh, Lamborghini winning the Endurance Cup race at Monza. They were quick this morning, and Mirko Bortolotti has just slammed in the fourth quickest time. So it's still the number one Audi from the 333 Ferrari, the 17 Audi, and now the 63 Lamborghini. And Bortolotti and his uh, race partner, Christian Engelhardt, are looking very, very strong indeed. Well, that 63 Lamborghini, a combination of Engelhardt and Mirko Bortolotti, very strong partnership strong car that we saw back two weeks ago in Monza in the endurance round the dominance that they enjoyed really especially when we got into the final one hour they were just untouchable and that's where they would like to be again here this weekend well a car that can certainly challenge we saw the pace them say he's coming good through the previous session but uh, it's the ACA ASP team that's best place of the Mercedes squads this afternoon 88 car looking at at the moment the, the big red AMG car there, Daniel Juncadea, the Spanish racer, uh, fifth fastest, sharing with Felix Sarayas, who's crossed over the Puerto Rican uh, from single-seaters with a very good effect. We saw a great run from them at Mizano, so certainly a very, very strong pairing. Just two cars further, three cars further ahead. In fact, there are two Acura ASP cars, the slightly different livery of the Pro-Am car in front, and uh, 88, no problem, Juncadea around the outside. And a couple of places further up the track is one of the HTP motorsport cars it could even be the Pereira book car I'll try and pick it out around the track in the meantime Mirko Portolotti must have been listening to what we were saying because he's improved up to third place now within just under 58 hundredths of a second from the number one Audi the WRT squad this year have had a really lean time I mean you think back a season or two seasons ago and WRT wherever you look we're always top of the time Gold standard scoring, winning the race never the benchmark OK, Mirko Such Bortolotti has been listening. Look, well. he's put a pink time on our timing screen. Pink, purple, call it what you will. That's fastest of all, so he's deposed the best opening sector. A uh, stretch of, uh, of timing ahead of Christopher Meese, who had the best in the number one Audi. So certainly, I think we're going to have more progress than the 63 Lamborghini. One car not out there on is. track. Coming through oh, Dingle there he is. Up a little bit of twitch. And again, Mirko Bortolotti carrying a load of momentum through. Gary Sheen or the Sheen curve through Sterling's runs wide but keeps it straight so no nasty sort of fishtailing from the Huracan down into Clearways, gets the nose in, gets the apex. Again, watch the way the car just floats out to the edge of the circuit, then comes back in one constant and smooth arc. If he gets into 1 minute 24s, he will go top. It's very close, uh, 55, and so he does. 1 minute 24, not just into them, 1 minute 24.4. That's within a tenth of a second of the fastest time this morning. And more importantly, it's over half a second quicker than Christopher Mies in the number one Audi, so that's the time worker. You can see the look in his eyes, the depth of concentration coming down the hill into Bottom Bend, or Graham Hill Bend comes through there. Whoa! Stayed on, and then oh, half on the track. Here. See the little flick of the finger just barely touches it. It's so quick down into Sterling's, gets the car in, then balances again on the throttle and the steering. The other gear pulled up to fourth, fifth, sixth gear, looks in the mirror, checks who's coming. Not many places around the racetrack you get a really a moment to breathe, to look in your mirrors. Comes down now into Hawthorne to the Lamborghini. Runs a little bit wide, but positive the speed he's carrying. Currently, we're not seeing any improvement in the first sector. He's about a 
just under a tenth down in the first sector. Kilovic in the Ferrari still holds the fastest sector time in sector two. But you can see a 37.5 is that fastest sector time to date. 39.5, so this lap is not going to match the last 134.4 we saw from the 63 Lamborghini. Christopher Meese has improved, remains in second place in the number one Audi. He's uh, also got into the 1 minute 24s. He's half a second down. 33 cars came here to Brands Hatch to play. This is the second free practice session, and not even a quarter of an hour into the first practice session, we lost the number 11 Kessel Racing Ferrari against the barriers. That's not out on the circuit, it's still being repaired. repaired. I've asked Jack Nichols to lend them a helping hand. I'm sure he'll be able to reshape that car. Warning on screen, car 27 must respect track limits at where? Turn three, Graham Hill Bend. Which car is that? The orange one, Team Lazarus Lamborghini. And I have looked over the timing screens already twice in this session, seen it run over the curbing there. A lot of people are, but that seems to be doing it a lot of the time. Christopher Meese, fastest in the middle sector. Can he reclaim that current fastest time in this one hour second free practice session? Comes across the line, 124.6, an improvement by just about three and a half tenths of a second but not the 0.6 of a second that was the gap. So an improvement from the Audi. Christopher Meese knows what he needs to do. Success here last year, they won. And Zoid and Christopher Meese won convincingly in the second of the two rounds on that Sunday afternoon. That time we saw a Bentley, and here is Maxime Soule, fifth fastest at the moment, the Belgian racer. So we've got Lamborghini, Audi, Ferrari, Audi, and then a Bentley, then Mercedes. So a good mix of cars, five mix of five makes of car in the top six positions. And Bentley have had a season of highs and lows so far, haven't they? It's been a tough year. I mean, Mizano, the number eight car was just about trashed. Then there were all the issues that occurred in, in Monza. And the number seven car, I'm trying to think about that finish, but certainly the, the, the number, was the number seven car had the problems. The number eight car, I'm trying to think where it finished in Monza. So it's, it's not been an easy beginning to the 2017 season. But, you know, this is a car that in either sprint or endurance configuration, you've got to have as one of your potential winners, both the seven and eight car. And again, although it is a physically large car, it's one of those cars that I've described it as being light on its wheels, light on its feet. A really good car, it just needs more. And I don't want to use luck because I dislike the term you're lucky, you're unlucky, because in life you have to make things happen for you. So they need to make things happen. They've got the equipment to do it, they've got the personnel to do it, they've just got to get it right on the day. I had the sister car number seven, Stephen Kane on board, they were sitting at the table alongside us at lunchtime. And, and, uh, sorry, Johnny Kane, wasn't it? it was his, his no relation. No relation at all, don't even look the same. But uh, now he's up into sixth place overall, so Bentley's fifth and sixth. It's great to ride around on the track, the car sitting very pretty on the circuit sighting itself going up through Surtees and again TV always flattens it but there is a lot of gradient change as we're seeing over the crest and down Pilgrims dropping off towards Hawthorns for Stephen Kane. So just launching into Hawthorns to get the wheel in and as long as you have got the car that you have got that sort of level of comfort in it you know a quicker turn on the wheel for Westfield it's a sharper shorter corner so you, you don't feed it in quite so as you would have done in Hawthorns, then again into Sheen. You can afford to take quite a lot of the kerb on the inside to guarantee that you're not going to run too wide on the exit. Then just on this exit kerb on the outside, that's the nasty, uneven kerb on the exit of Stirlings. And well, here we are, back already, back at clearways. The car floats from this point and almost settles down under the suspension, then gets back and just, I mean, it's just a great corner, great feeling. Taking the short line, then cutting back to the left, to make his entry into, as you say... Into Paddock Hill Bend in fourth place. Three green sectors of the three the three sectors around the lap. So, 0.666 of a second down on the ultimate pace so far. He needs to find another couple of tenths and he will go ahead of Karlovitz to go third. But for Bentley, it's looking quite strong. Now fourth and sixth positions, but still 63, Mirko Bortolotti, his Lamborghini from GRT Grasser Racing Team, one of the two they've brought. Now McLaren went well this morning. It was the 42 that was their best place runner with... David Fuminelli and Scottish racer Lewis Williamson up the top end. We're looking there at 44, Straka Racing's Johnny Kane and Loris Hazeman's pairing. Looking to see how they progress at the moment. It's Johnny Kane in 11th place, but look how much traffic he's got himself in. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the problems with brands. It's a relatively short lap. You've got 33 cars on track. Johnny Kane here with his dad, Andrew, his brother David, and I think his father's brother or something. And Andrew and I, contemporaries, 
from the good old days back at Kirkiston and Bishop's Court and Dunboyne and Phoenix Park circuits that we raced on in Ireland way back in, I'm not sure how long ago it was. Andrew, of course, was one of the leading mini drivers of his era. And uh, along with his ace mechanic, Jim McClements, built the best A-series BMC engines, Downton conversions, I believe. Happy days they were. Happy days, I'm sure, but it's great to see, uh, you know, coming to a circuit where the family could come over as well. It's quite a big Northern Irish contingent in Block Pan at the moment, isn't there, with Andrew well, Watson Andrew Watson, well. absolutely. Andrew, of course. Stephen Kane, Johnny Kane. Yeah. Yes, well, there's a lot of talent that has always been a very strong motorsport fraternity you know, in North and South Ireland, but quite frequently they tend to hang back, follow a career, and go racing purely as a, as a weekend entertainment. But those that have braved the bigger world, you know, the big pond rather than the small pond, and they're doing extremely well. And of course, Johnny Cade didn't improve that lap traffic too much uh, of a hindrance. But Johnny, of course, has been racing the World Endurance Championship for Stracker Racing for some number of years. And this year, getting a taste of GT racing and running 12th at the moment, has to get clear of that traffic because he's not going to make an improvement unless he can either get past it or hang back a fair bit in his Stracker Racing 44 McLaren over the curbs, not too badly down the bottom hill. Riding on board the Salicada Clement Schmidt 75 ISR Audi. That is in the hands of Salaquada at the moment and again watching that orange one Lazarus Lamborghini that's already had a warning car number 27 and I think someone is going to be passing with some money to give it to the race stewards for that I mean it's not like you don't know it's there but if you keep doing it time and time again I mean Pavlov's dog was trained but I mean I don't think that's Pavlov's dog driving the Lamborghini <laughs> well he's doing pretty well if he is now just trying to see any oh. movements oh big oh. sector time from Johnny Pink. Kane we said get clear of traffic and you might make progress. Didn't think you'd do it to that extent. So waiting for the final third of the lap, looking to our right out of our commentary box, Johnny Kane sweeps into sight. He's 11th at the moment. He's That's Jake Dennis in the Audi. Oh, J-A-K. Yes. yes, I know, it's an easy one to... Johnny just... Kane is K-A-J, the other way he's yeah. down in 13th. I couldn't think how Johnny had managed to get clear track. Fourth, quickest for number three Audi, Jake Dennis. Good Great job. Now, he would know brands from single-seater racing. you are probably days on end spent pounding around nonetheless that's what he wanted from this race here to put himself on the WRT map and make a statement and that's that time right now fastest sector overall so far we've just got into the session by just under 20 minutes so there is the young man looking well he will be looking quite happy when he comes back into the pitch that's 0-4 on the screen, you can see it on that number 3 Audi, so yes, J-A-K on our screen is Jake Dennis, K-A-J. It's Johnny K in the 44 McLaren, but McLaren down in 13th position. That time of Jake Dennis's moves him within half a second of Berko Bortolotti's pace-setting time. Top four covered by 0.488 of a second. We've said it before, and we'll say it again. Come qualified, we expect the top 20 cars or so of this 33-car entry to be covered by just one second. Up around behind the, the Bentley, so that's going to sort of hinder the progress. There's no point in push, 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 because... He's at the fastest middle section yeah, of all. Yeah, well, I mean, at that he's done it for capturing the Bentley, whether he can maintain... It's not interfering with him as they sweep it's through Clark Curve into clearways, or is it? I don't a, think it a, is. To me, it's a distraction. A mental one. When you get that close to a, a car, then it's a distraction. We'd like to see whether he can make any improvement or not. 20, no, he's 20, he does, he goes third. Yeah, well, effort, good effort. That was a personal best in sector he found, he found two tenths. Well, he did very well not to have that the, the Bentley interfere either aerodynamically or the, the, the more important the, the actual mental distraction of a car being directly ahead of you yeah so the top three cars now covered by 0.272 of a second to get a second away from uh, the ultimate time so far you have to go down to 10th place overall and Johnny Kane is now making progress got clear the traffic gained one position he's 1.08 second down from the 63 Lamborghini's pace in 11th Johnny, yes. Relatively clear track as he sweeps yes. into Surtees. This could be key, this lap. How's his first sector time? Waiting for that to come out. It's his best so far. Yeah, just interesting. He took the very, very wide line, very late cutback in Surtees. Other drivers tend to maybe come in a little bit earlier and hug the curb, but Johnny took a much, much wider arc to really then straighten the exit to try and get the maximum drive off Surtees' corner to the quickest part of the racetrack. One thing I want to point out as we look at the 44 car, I always like to keep an eye on the 84 car, the Mercedes that won the opening round. And Daniel, so, uh, 
from Pereira, who was such a star in the first start part of the race. Down in 14th, keep an eye on that. The Mercedes took a while to come good in that first practice session. Here's it's a, where you are at the end that counts. Here's a thought. We just had lunch and that's our own hospitality. And I wonder, are drivers' lap times any way related to what they ate for lunch? Because some of them were eating things, I thought, you must be joking. I mean, I thought these are professional athletes who ate diets that were prepared by you know, sports consultants. Well, we shall name names. Tucking into lasagnas and... Johnny Kane has been around the block a few times as a professional racing driver. He had the, pick, the sort of little bird portion on his plate, but others who should remain nameless had the, the trencherman approach. Do you, know, do you know why? It was free. It was free. <laughs> it free. Pile it on the plate. I went for seconds. So who's improving? Johnny Kane last time around. In fact, he just squeaked another tenth of a second. He's now very close indeed to the 88 Mercedes. Number one, Audi, of course, that took victory here last time. They've changed over. Christopher Meese start, started the session. And last year's Blancpain Sprint Cup champion Enzo Ida, winner here 12 months ago, second fastest. But that that's, isn't his time. No, that's Christopher Meese's time. So Enzo in behind the wheel of that number one, Audi. And should be there until the end of the session, effectively 40 minutes of running. Yes, I mean, again, people might have started with new rubber or fresh rubber. We don't actually know there's so many cars in the pit lane and where we are in the commentary position. Our eyes aren't quite as good as the Golden Eagles. We can't spot a trout at a mile away. So we don't know what the compound of or what the, the sticker tower would look like from this distance. We'll leave that to people watching on TV, see if they can phone in with the answers. But the number one out again now, interesting there, Enzo didn't go over the curves at all. He's just feeling his way into this session. And uh, would obviously love to repeat their victory of here 12 months ago. This is the fourth visit for, oh, well, that's a short out. Come and talk to the engineers and go back out again. But I'm fairly sure that Christopher Meese won't get back in that car unless it's the final 10 minutes. But for Enzo, I think he only did a couple of laps and out and in. And uh, get a pull up alongside his garage. Quite a lot of activity in the pit lane. Good high shot, just showing you that out on the circuit. Haven't seen so much of the 55 Ferrari. Spirit of Race run by AF Corsa, Phil Quay for Lorenzo Carze. At the moment, Phil is 13th fastest overall. One of four Ferraris in the race here at Brands Hatch. Going under the pretty logo bridge out of Sterling's Clark Curve, Clearways. Clearways Clark Curve, if you get them in the correct order face the right way and onto the start finish straight that basically is only straight for a very very short period of time and then it starts curving very slightly to the right to the brow where you can see nothing that's paddock hill bend yes and i mean the, 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 what they call the main straight here is a curve all the way from clearways all the way to paddock and that time for phil quave gained him five positions up to eighth place overall very good Top and, and I second watched, ferrari i watched the lap it was a, what i would call a very on demonstrative driving style very neat precise clean no exuberance, just carrying the speed. Now, quite a different entry into Certes. I don't know with Johnny Kane, he was hanging out much more on the right than trying to make it a, a more acute cut. Whereas Phil Quaife in the Ferrari, more the middle of the road, sort of kind of feeling it in on the steering. Different attitudes, different approaches. Obviously, also different characteristics from the respective cars. The McLaren of Johnny Kane, the Ferrari for Phil Quaife. Well, Phil continues to improve, but now he's got caught behind one of the Acura ASP. Well, he's very kindly pulled aside the Acura ASP Mercedes. How much that's compromised the middle of the three sectors for Phil Quave right out to the white line on the outside of Sheen Curve. Again, kissing it at the entry to Sterling's conservative run there through. Maybe he realises the lap has been compromised, but uh, certainly very tidy indeed in the 55 Ferrari for Phil Quave. The, the, the 458 and now the current Ferrari, the 488, considered to be probably amongst the not to say the easiest of cars to drive but the one that is oh, 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 oh. Well, we've only oh, had one spin hello. so far hello vicar what was that all about yeah we've only had one spin so far today it was also ferrari it was the number 11 kessel racing ferrari but that i'd like to see that again well that was i was going to say it it, it 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 helps the driver phil turned in back end started to come around no, he didn't get any oh, oh there is a McLaren well, that oh, no it's the 24 it's the Marco Hedis to Kangas Caitlin Woods yes right a young stars go yeah, who's know. clearly got it wrong at Sterling's yep. done exactly what see we said skid marks quite early over the, curb. the curbs and just towards the end of the curb the car has rotated it's hit the barrier it's now sitting in the middle of the racetrack we're going to have to get a well it's a yellow right now I suspect it'll be a red flag to clear the car because there's obviously damage to the radiator you can see the steam coming from that and did it just nose it in or did it nose and tail but you can see where the skid marks go in at 90 degrees to the barrier the car's another 50 or so meters down the racetrack but it's come to a standstill red flag 
quite rightly too. So that car, let's. let's so maybe. well, the, well, here's a replay coming up. Just uh, already over the curbs, and exactly well, as you said, John, it yeah. whips away to the left, clangs the barriers. Can't see the extent of the damage from our well, car. Nose Kangas. and tail, I think, but certainly the right rear has clobbered it. But that is the the danger of the the curbing on the exit of Sterling's. I mean, I know I go on ad infinitum bore about it, but that curb is the curb you've got to respect above all here at Brands Hatch because it is uneven. And if you run it, and even if you drop your right rear over the curb, it'll just snatch you and flick the car around, and you're a passenger. And the barrier is only within sort of a four blink. meters, three meters from the edge of the track. There is no margin for error there. So that's a heavy impact. That would have probably been about 50, 60 miles an hour. Whoever was in the car will have... It was Helix Kangas, Marco, okay. the Finnish well, racer. He will have certainly understood what whiplash is all about because he'll have had a dose of it in that incident. Yeah, very tough indeed for the 22-year-old Finn. He and uh, teammate Caitlin Wood stepped up from the GT4 Euro Series. Last year they won the prize drive. What a prize drive to step up to the GT3 Championship, the, the full red meat Grand Pan top series but uh, a lesson that had to be learned we saw a lot of the, the very top riders running over that curb on the exit of Sterling's earlier in the session getting a twitch but being able to control it but uh, clearly it surprised him too much and as you said John I think it's where the curb just drops away a little bit at the it, exit it's an uneven curb the worst part of it is if you drop your wheel over it so that you've got gravel just butting up to the edge of the curb and the momentum, the pendulum effect then just simply to takes over. And there's nothing you can do. You're, uh, you're, you are nothing more than a passenger. You're, you're carrying too much speed. You're normally hard on the throttle. And once it goes, within you know, a second or so, you're kissing metal. Yeah, and unfortunately, you weren't quite Nostradamus, but you predicted that that would be where it would happen. So looking down over the pit lane, we've almost got to the halfway point in the second free practice session. Qualifying starts at 4.15 this afternoon, so for the writer, Young Stars crew, it's a chance uh, to get on some work they didn't want to do. But we're going to go down. Car number one is second fastest, so let's hear from one of its drivers, with Dakota, Christopher Meese. Now we just saw you chatting to Enzo, what exactly were you chatting about? You know, we were comparing the lines, everything, how this corner speed is compared to me and yeah, just doing some usual data stuff. You're looking very quick so far, can you catch up to Mirko? Well, we didn't use new tyres yet, so obviously we still have something in the pocket, but I'm pretty sure the others have as well, so we will see where we end up after, after the session, but uh, there's still much in the car left, so uh, we're pushing quite hard. And what kind of lap time are you expecting on new tyres? Well, I think later in the qualifying it will be like high 23s, mid 23s for sure, maybe low 23s. You never know how the weather changes the track, but um, so far I can say the, the boys did an awesome job improving the car from FP1 to FP2, and yeah, it's, it's fantastic to drive right now. Good luck, thank, thank you. you. Well, good. always good to hear from Christopher Meese, very balanced young man, isn't he? Yeah, and I mean, he is the quintessential, I would say, professional Audi Central contracted driver. He is employed to do a job, he did outstandingly last year with Enzo Ida, and uh, Enzo won the championship. Uh, the, uh, looking down the pit lane, but let's have a look and see. Ah, uh, there we go, now does it, do they drop the wheel over on, uh, it gets, I think, they, uh, there we go. You see what happens, he's kicked up the gravel outside, the car starts this rotation, there is nothing you can do, you put the lock on, you get off the throttle, you're sitting there, and you've got the brakes on, and that's not really slowing down. Hits the grass, right front, right rear, big impact, and you know, you're sitting in there bracing yourself for what you know is the inevitable. So with the right front, right rear, the car damage, you'll have to check the entire chassis to ensure that the car is square, because that was a fairly significant impact, didn't have a lot of space to scrub speed off. No, I mean, fantastic camera work to catch that, but I think looking at that uh, slow-mo replay, uh, the crew are starting to realise the length of their job list. There'll be no afternoon tea at the right of Young Stars. But do you know what I would do in the driver briefing? I would replay that to the entire ensemble and point out to, the, to everybody here who's going to be behind the wheel that this is what can happen if you disrespect, particularly in Sterling's, that curb. You drop the wheel off, that's what happened. Drop the wheel off, and then once it's there, you've got no chance. Yeah, absolutely whipped away if you go off at Graham Hill Bend, we've seen a lot of cars running over the likelihood of big damage. Isn't as great, but it certainly can compromise you. But at Stirling's, it's there to bite you. And down at the 85 
Mercedes yet to see it really show its hand today. Fabian Schiller and Jules and Kobiak. Well, in this afternoon session, the morning session, they were very quick indeed. They were second fastest, but times have moved on. In fact, the times from this morning, 1 minute 24.7 is still fourth, fifth fastest yep. lap of the weekend. So they know they've got it in the bag. This is a chance. A lot of the teams would have been coming over to change to their second driver at this point. That's been forced. Good to see Marco Helis de Cangas is... Uh, out and about. Yeah, I mean, he'll have, he'll have, he'll have around. rattled around in the cockpit and, you know, there's steel roll cages in these cars, lots of hard objects to your legs, particularly your knee will be in close contact. You get a rattle off a, you know, a roll cage or even off carbon fibre. You know, it's sore, but he looks pretty much OK. Of course, that's the, the effect, the adrenaline kick that occurs when you have an incident like that. You get this massive influx of adrenaline it takes away all the discomfort the pain later on this afternoon or this evening and that's oh i've got a bit of a pain here or a bit of a pain there look john the next bit of pain is is now he's trying to think what he's going to tell the team oh, boss. What's stephen kane then doing talking to the team we want to go faster he's saying at the moment they're sitting really well they're up in fourth place overall half a second down on the ultimate pace but let's head down and speak to the co-driver of marco hedis de Cangas, down with dakota let's hear from Caitlin Wood. Caitlin, that was a bit of an incident there. What happened? Um, I wasn't in the car. Marco was in the car. So uh, we radioed him and he's okay, which is the main thing. But um, we just saw the replay and it just looks like he just uh, got too much curb and it just spun the car around into the opposite wall, which is yeah, really unfortunate. It looks like uh, major damage. So we just have to wait and see for the car to come back and yeah, see what it's like. Okay, right. Well, we're going to watch the replay now. So if you actually just look at the screen, we're going to see what exactly happened. Okay. So there's your car going along. Yeah, he's taken too much curb, and at this point, right now, he's pretty much a passenger. And uh, <laughs> is that awful to watch? Yeah. And then he goes in quite hard, both in the front and the back. So, um, what do you think the damage is going to be like? It doesn't look very good, to be completely honest. The boys here at Ryder Engineering will do anything and everything to get us back out on track. Um, it looks big enough that we'll probably have to miss qualifying, but hopefully we can come back for the races tomorrow. Uh, I can't really say much. The car's not back. So, um, yeah, I just know that the boys here at Ryder are, are legends and will do everything that they can to get us back out on track. Now, there's a message on the front of the car. What exactly does that mean? The message, thank you. Um, that's actually um, a friend of... Hans, Hans Ryder, who is the boss of Ryder Engineering, and they've been helping us out this season. So big okay, thank lovely. you to them. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you, guys. Good to hear from Caitlin. Caitlin Wood, very well balanced bumper cars. Let's see, the hopes that's restricted to those off the circuit. But of all the crews here, the 33 crews for the Blanc Pain uh, GT Sprint Cup, we wanted you, John. You want to talk about bumper cars? Well, I but just we want to say, I remember going on your know, fun fairs and bumper cars, but my complaint was. You could never get them to go quick enough to really smash into the, the person you least liked. And the only way you could do it is to try and do a loop on your own and just build up speed and then target them and just nail them. And that felt, you know, that's what you can do in bumper cars. John, we'll go out there afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I pick it out. But I was just saying, of all the crews that didn't want to lose track time, some was lost this morning when the Kessel Ferrari went off and uh, the red flag came out and took about 20 minutes out of the session. But the uh, writer young stars crew of uh, Caitlin Wood and Marco Hedister Kangas, they wanted to just be here and go round yeah. and round. 4.1 seconds off the pace in the morning session. Yes, that was an interrupted session, but this was a chance for them to get to within 3.1. And, and I think they're just going back down to the exit of Stirlings to see the work being carried out. The car is on the back of a flatbed. They've got to check the barriers on the inside to see if there's no damage that uh, would prevent this session getting back underway. Restart is 13.35, five minutes away. So let's watch and see. Here we go again. Now, let's the car run. He runs out wide, but the worst thing is he gets the two wheels, the right wheels, over the curb, into the gravel. That begins the pendulum effect, and there is nothing, as Caitlin said herself, sitting there as a passenger now the only good news is the car hit the barrier pretty much well maybe not quite as much as i thought i thought it was going to be sort of side on it was the right front then the right rear swung round clearly it'll be suspension damage you've got to check then the chassis the suspension mounting points bodywork will be plenty of bodywork available and there we're looking to 
The garage, oh, that's assumed that's a 63. I'm not quite sure which of the two. It is a 63, 63. number 01. You can just okay. see it on the windscreen behind the mechanic. So this is the car currently quickest overall in this second free practice session. It's Christian Engelhardt sitting on board, waiting to have a go. Of course, the session was started by Mirko Bortolotti, who set that lap time of 1 minute 24.425 seconds. That was almost as quick, within a tenth of the best time set by Dries van Tor in the number five Audi this morning. But interesting to hear how, cl how low you can go. What do we think the pole will be this afternoon? Why don't we go down and find from a driver who might set it? Mirko Bortolotti with Dakota. Mirko, early days, but you're looking really quick. Do I? Yes, of course, you're up P1 currently. Yeah, it's just free practice, you know, we're we working on the car, feels quite good. Uh, carrying it from last year, where we already had a decent car around here. It's a really cool track, it's really good fun to be to be here at Brands Hatch, one of my favorite tracks. Um, team is working really well, hopefully we can carry that momentum from Monza into that weekend. I think so, and I hope so, and uh, yeah, let's see, let's see what we can do. The important session is still coming up, so for now, so far so good. Thank you, good luck. I have to say, Bruce, there is a driver who is focused, who is positive, he knows where they need to be, he is working to try and consolidate that. Of course, qualifying is a different story. It'll start at, I think, quarter past four this afternoon. So the ambience and the track temperature that we have, as we now just 1.30, it will be beginning to, with the wind, particularly this sort of strong northeasterly wind that's blowing across Brands Hatch, that will take away the ambient, it'll take away track temperature. It might actually mean the track is actually a bit quicker because it's a lot cleaner as well. Yeah, and just my thought on Mirko Bortolotti, he's, a, he's someone who's now chock full of confidence. He knows he's got the car. He knows they've got to keep that focus to deliver, but he's also so on top of his game, he can uh, throw in a bit of mirth there as well. You look fast, do I? Well, the thing, the thing with confidence is when you have it, everything flows. You're positive. When you're lacking confidence, everything is negative and you're sort of... You just can't turn the wheel, you can't open the throttle. You're just lacking that commitment and confidence. That was an example of a driver, as you pointed out, who's right now at the very top of his game. And it would be an interesting punt if anybody was interested in who's going to be pole sitter, who will be the car alongside on the front row of the grid. You've got to put the 63 Lamborghini as being one of those two cars at this, at this moment. Yes, and we saw the pace set this morning by the number five Audi. Just to let you know, that wasn't in the top 20 in the first uh, 20 or so minutes of the session before we had the red flag when the number 24 Lamborghini visited the tyre wall on the exit of Stirling. We've seen the, the replay several times. I think we may well see it again. As, as, you, as you pointed out, John, that is the ideal thing to play to all drivers in all classes racing at Brands Hatch this weekend and for future briefings, how not to do it and the damage that you can do when yeah. you do run a little wide. And I, I think Mirko Bortolotti summed it up saying he loves to come to Brands Hatch. Racing drivers love circuits that really challenge them, make them focus and think about it. And they actually, they don't mind having barriers or whatever close because it adds to the, the if you like, the buzz of doing a good lap and that's why I think great drivers love racing in circuits like Brands Hatch and those that are, that are nat less naturally gifted aren't so comfortable. Yeah, and just to get to feel the ebb and flow, getting that momentum, carrying it, keeping that car balanced, particularly around the bit of the circuit we're looking at now, looking up towards Hawthorne's at the end of the Pilgrim's Drop and Hawthorne Hill, then they go along the Derrick Minter Strait, just out of our sight, and then Westfield's one of my favorite corners on the circuit. But Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit in particular, Corners that drop away from you, that rise up in front of you. Certainly every sort of corner here. Number 35, Ferrari. Haven't seen so much of that in the session. The, uh, 39, sorry, the Kessel Racing TP12 car from uh, with the, the Singer Brewery sponsorship on the flanks. Busy Virok Bandy and Carlo Van Dam, the Dutch driver, joining the tie. Certainly very, very distinctive, but not yet towards the front end. Not yet in the top 20. And someone ahead of it has kicked up the dirt into its face yes that was one of the uh, Stracker sorry one of the attempt to uh, 67 Lamborghini I reckon in front there's Carlo Van yes Dan. so the Lamborghini ran wide sufficiently wide to kick up a bit of dust the Ferrari following didn't quite follow the example but was a little bit wider than maybe you'd like to do and getting that wide you do lose traction because it's not tarmac it's a, it's these were the eco bricks that are built in certain parts of the circuit and they are they allow effectively what would be left of the grass 
or even the AstroTurf that's close to by, as you point out, the number 90. Yeah, it's down in 16th position at the moment. Raffaele Marcello, one of our new favourites in the championship because he's such an attacking driver. Here he comes, sweeping through the final couple of corners, clearways into Clark Curve. And uh, we expect him to pop up much close to the top. He's fallen to 17th. What will this lap produce? Number 90 goes second fastest. 1 minute 24.577. 1, 0.15 of a second off the pace. And off the track. Wow, wow, wow. I mean, but not lifting. I mean, he is... I mean, apart from anything else, he's Italian. So there's an, always that sort of, you know, feel, flair. He's an ex-Ferrari Academy driver. May still will be. Watch how he exits coming out of Pedicle Bend. Just... I mean, you can't flirt more than that with the edge of the pedicle bend. Any no. more, and that would have been shooting off straight into the barrier on the right-hand side of the track. We saw Maximilian Book do that two years ago in the Bentley. Big impact on the right-hand side. But, you know, Marcello is one of those guys who oozes confidence. You know, spoke to him after Mazzano when he had that little bit of contact with Dominic Barman. Never thought a thing about No, had to remind him of it. No, no, it was not my fault. Yeah, it's only I'm, I'm here to race, he said. Positive thinking. So at the moment, it's a 63 Lamborghini, still top from Marcello. Not so quick on this lap. Maybe he didn't really have traffic early on, but he's oh, fallen wow. because now Norbert Seedler, the 19 Lamborghini, when you were talking about the 63, I was thinking they could be in the mix as well. One minute, 24.329, one of the McLarens flirting with going wide, and certainly the number 44. McLaren with Loris Hazemans has been warned for exceeding track limits. Got to keep an eye on that. But uh, now down in with a 0-3 on the windscreen, it shows that Raffaele Marcello has fallen back. There'll be no improvement from him. But Christopher Haaser, Santaloc Racing, went very well under the radar a little bit. He crept up to great results at Mizano. Yeah, Christopher Haaser, currently eighth, fastest overall, sector one. This is almost turning into, there is the idea, almost turning into a qualifying session. Teams are now exploring the outer limits of the well, performance in terms of lap time, but grip and balance, because they're going to go into these qualifying segments. They need to know what the ultimate performance, the ultimate pace is going to be. Personal best in second sector. Has he got a chance to eclipse the number 19 Lamborghini, currently quickest on a 24.329? Well, he's, no. he's very close to the tail of the 3-3-3 Ferrari. It shouldn't affect him. Here comes Christopher Hasen. He's down at the moment, as you say, John. Way down the order. Well, in 10th place, but will he go up to third? Yes, he does. Third position for him. That was a bit of a lucky guess from me. One fifth of a second down, or point one nine nine. His next lap will be compromised as he gets up inside that Ferrari very easily, but not the best line there. Oh, Norbert Seedler. Again, I mean, first sector time, not particularly quick. Fastest overall in the second sector. Didn't really improve. He's about two hundredths of a second down on his current overall fastest lap. Let me see the 84 car now. That's the car that just decimated the field back at Mazzano. Still looking to see where it is. It's not even outside in the, top the 20. No, it's down in 24th position with Frank Pereira, but has he got clear track? Well, he has. He's just gone out of Graham Hill Bend, sweeping along. Cooper Strait, the French driver who's just taken to these Mercedes. Don't forget, this is about the third manufacturer he's raced for in three years. And uh, now it's Raffaele Marciello, 1 minute 24.295. Just want to check how many the top second goes down to 17th place. We were reckoning on 20 come qualifying. Yeah, it'll be, I think, in qualifying, it'll probably be 20. But there we are, Raffaele Marciello in the Mercedes Benz, fastest overall. Waiting to see what Frank Pereira will do in the 84. As I mentioned in Mazzano, this driver car pairing, Frank Pereira coming into the team to keep Maximilian Book absolutely on the top of his feet, the top of his toes. But just to go back to that, two years ago, Frank was, uh, Pereira was racing a TD. Oh, oh dear. no. Is that number 90? It you sort be. of feel it probably is. No, that yellow could flag. be Raffaele Marcello. Can't tell you which the Acker ASP uh, Mercedes Sterling that is. Bend. Did, did. We saw the We went off much earlier in the corner there. Did the 84 car get caught up with that yellow flag? Did he have to back out of it? Or not, looks like he may have done, but let's have a look and see where 84 goes third quickest. So that so, would have been, I think maybe Frank Pereira was just arriving at the scene of the... Well, Here let's we have go. a look at the replay. On his own, there oh, we are. he put a wheel on the outside of the kerb. Yeah, well, he put it on the grass, actually, as he's turning in, just being too greedy. Before the corner. Did he stay off the tyre wall? No, he didn't. He hit the tyre barrier, so the, the right front of the Mercedes. And that's a car, again, are we going to have to see a red flag or is it sufficiently far off track to just have a local yellow in that particular part of track up at Sterling's corner? So 15 minutes of the session remaining. Well, that was Felix Sarayas, by the way. Daniel Juncadella would be going well, but they were just around in 20th position when it happened, starting to wind up to a quick time. I'm sure they would have been in within one second of the ultimate lap. 
And just goes back to the point about Frank Pereira. Two years ago, he raced a BMW. Last year, he raced an Audi with increasing effect. And this year, he, he's he's out performing. And, and, and of course, Bruce, if you go back to Mercedes, yeah, he raced a Porsche. He raced Indeed. a 911. And For I years. remember, yeah, I think he was on pole at Silverstone in the 911 back in 2014. That's right, for racing for Ulmeras. Pro GT by Ulmeras that year. Right, third position. Number three, out on the circuit, not in. No, Fabian Schiller's now taken that over. No, it's not, sorry. It's number three, that's Peter Schotthorst. Just trying to get my three-letter acronyms lined up. The weekend now, a few drivers, all those Audi staying very sensibly on the black stuff as they come out of Sterling's. Eighth position at the moment for the number three, Peter Schotthorst coming into the pits. So we've had that little flurry of activity on the track a few minutes ago. Most of the top ten are in the pits at the moment, yeah. looking at the timing screens. So still just under a quarter of an hour remaining. 75 comes up into, yes it is, the 75 comes up into Paddockill Bend. Looking to see currently Don in Clement Schmidt behind the wheel. Don in 15th place they would like to. It's not for the sake of this session, they just want to you know, drag out what they believe is going to be the maximum performance there is Clement Schmidt. Well, the Austrian driver is just uh, just eight tenths of a second down on the pace, staying nice and tidy over the curbing. But we have a pink tie on screen. It's Frank Pereira. He's had enough of not being fastest in the 84. HCP Motorsport Mercedes. If you want to know which one that is, that's we've got one with the green stripe up the side. That's 86. The yellow stripe up the side is 85. 84 has the red flash. If, if you want help with identifying these big grey races, but right now, Devin Schmidt halfway round the lap in the 75. ISR one of two Audis. Going into Westfield, track drops away, drops away. And just to point out, from Pereira, purple first sector time, purple second sector time, should be going top. At the moment, he's 0.060 of a second down on the ultimate pace. So close between the top three, four runners. So much Schmidt being cautious on the entry into Sterling's, not running as wide as we saw the Mercedes a couple of laps ago. Gets through, but it is Frank Pereira, 124.1, quickest time so far. And we've just got under 13 minutes remaining. Well, we heard earlier from Christopher Mees, a high 23, one low minute. He, he wasn't sure if it was low 23, I, but I, certainly I'm in qualifying, that's the target time. But if we're at 24.1 now, probably without fresh rubber, that's indicative of the pace that's still to come. I, I think a, a low one minute 23 is the time I would be looking to. Now, it depends on track conditions, it depends on traffic. And there is the Lamborghini back. You can see the slap. That's the, right the, front. That's the less damaged side, John, isn't it? No, the, the right main... side was the only side damaged. The left side wasn't damaged, just the right side. Right front, right oh, yeah, rear. Sorry, yes. Yeah, right yeah. front, right rear. Flip back round. So the nose, the nose hit first, and the back swung round. So the the rear might have had the, the heavier impact, and that of course is round the gearbox area, and that's always the expensive area if you want to put it in loose terms. And also Pereira the again, past the sector time in sector one. Sector one, waiting to catch it. Sector two, the seven, eight. Bentley comes into the pit lane. So the track, you can get traffic. Still quite about half a dozen cars in the pit lane. So it's a question of where you fastest, find it. Sorry, Bruce. No, fastest no. second sector to Frank Pereira. It's going to be a one. He's got traffic. Every time there's a car on a quick lap, it seems to find the back of the Rinaldi racing Ferrari recently. Uh, he's come in. Oh, he's coming. He's toying with us. But that could have been the first one. I'd say a one minute twenty-four points here. Maybe a one minute twenty-three. I think it was going to be. I think he would have kissed into the high twenty-threes on that one. So just indicative. Mercedes Benz now fastest first and second. Are we going to have a repeat of what we saw in Mazzano? Well, we're starting to see some of the same cars get into the top, and certainly the 84 combination of uh, Franck Pereira and Maxi Buch came away with victory. Didn't show you the first hand, first of all, sorry. Right, message on screen. Team manager and current driver of car number three. We just talked about Peter, that. Peter Schoenhorst. Peter Schoenhorst. To, yes. to stewards after session. Pit lane speed violation. That's the removal of one finger? Well, I'll tell you what happened in Monza. It was interesting. There were a lot of speed lane, pit lane speed limit violations. And a number of drivers hadn't, or either weren't aware or hadn't been made aware that the pit lane speed limit button is only effective in first gear. So if you go down the pit lane and you pull second gear, the speed limit isn't, isn't the button is disengaged. So that's, I think, maybe, I don't know whether that's the case for number three, but certainly it did catch out a number of people in Monza. No, he's doing 80 then, please. Well, HCP Motorsport with 10 minutes remaining. Ben Barnacote. Yeah, well, he's looking quite happy, but uh, HCP Motorsport got all their three cars just lined up in the pit lane in diagonal formation, and so they should. Top, but in the pits, yeah, of course. Yeah. Time in hand. 66. 66. Haven't seen so much. That's the less shiny Attempto Racing Lamborghini. Marco Mapelli went well in that early on, and now it's Giovanni Venturini. 
uh, in seventh place overall, half a second down on the ultimate pace. So uh, going well for the 66 Lamborghini crew. S slightly foppish hairstyle, but as long as he's quick, it doesn't matter. It does matter, John, because you brought it up. <laughs> so tidy over the curves, that's the point. Kiss them, don't drive over them. Because with that, uh, Marco Hedis to Kangas Lamborghini, when it snapped away, you can see how it dropped down onto its belly. Because it's a big arc on the curve. Now, Alvaro Parent starting to make progress. He's got over his jet lag, presumably. Up 10th fastest in the 58 McLaren uh, for Stracker Racing. Sharing with Ben Barnicote, so no wonder Ben was smiling from I, I, the I think though. Alvaro Parent's jet lag has got jet lag. Yeah, yes. the poor guy backwards and forwards and it, it is exhausting and um, and as he said the other day the big difference if you're racing east coast one thing but if you're racing in California it's the eight hour time difference absolutely and, uh, it's the flight time plus the time change and you just catch yourself you don't know whether you're in America whether you're in Europe or you're somewhere mid-Atlantic looking at number 19 it was briefly topped with uh, Norbert Siedler and at the moment it's third fastest one of two GRT Grasso racing team Lamborghini's going increasingly well and certainly Lamborghini's been a massive success story with the Huracan model since they launched it racing all over the world a quick update on the race deliveries I told you the 85 uh, Fabian Schiller Jules Simkoviak Mercedes had yellow flashes on the side for this weekend it's got light grey flashes there we are of the moment but let's watch the 19 I think they'll be building up to a quick time it's not coming just yet on this lap but it's fairly clear around the back part of the circuit what's interesting to me is that the Lamborghini is a part of the VW ID empire and if you look at the ID R8 V10 same power unit probably same fundamental running gear but different chassis and it looks like the Lamborghini and the Hurricane have just got that little bit of advantage the ID looking for maybe something for the 2018 season that will bring the, the level of competitiveness of the ID back to the very front but, you know, we have to wait and see. Christopher Meese had been quickest initially, down in sixth place, just less than half a second slower than the Mercedes-Benz. Robin Friens has now popped up into sixth place. Yeah, he was down about 18th place, yeah. but I was just thinking he, he really needs to start winding it up. But he looked, uh, he made a bit of a mistake towards the end of that, so a bit more speed to come from Robin Friens. He's sixth fastest, though, 3.365 of a second down on the very best lap. Still in the hands of the 84 Mercedes crew. And um, we're still waiting while that one's sitting in. It's being pushed back into its pit back garage now with only seven and a half minutes remaining. They've clearly done the mileage they need to do. So Robin Freed's on the move up to sixth place. Handful of cars in the pit lane. But the gap between the top, now the top 19 cars covered by the first second on our timing screen. So there we have. The next person beyond that is the number 55 entry, which is the spirit of race, Phil Quaife Ferrari. If he can just eke out a tenth of a second we'll have what we were looking for the top 20 covered by a second Abanson Abril back in the number 7 car Stephen Kane will be watching eagerly from the pit wall to see how his teammate a bit of a hop and a skip and a jump coming through Westfield for Abanson Abril normally the Bentley looks more composed I would say than it looked just at that particular moment but back to the entry into Sterling's get the nose in let the car float out just run the car perfect exit from the Monegasque driver, then the run down into clearways again, just pick up your apex, let the car float out to the outside, follow the Mercedes through, now am I going to make a, a punt up the inside it's always difficult, you're, you can't really see it until you arrive upon it and he thinks the better of it, so his next option might be up the inside into Druids, but not close enough a little bit of opposite lock as he slithers his way down, Pedicle bend and loses that little bit of momentum Whoa. Oh, this is this is uh, this is not rally cross. Way beyond. Well, it's fantastic cross. I don't care what it is. So that's presumably is Phil Quaif going going for it in the spirit of race Ferrari. Let's check the number on the door when it comes past. Should be number fifty-five. So it is. Twentieth position overall. They were the ones just outside the top one second. In fact, we now have the top twenty fully covered. Oh, BMW goes top as if from nowhere. Suddenly, uh, Jess Crone. One minute twenty-three point nine seven two seconds. Wow. Thank you. What a well-kept secret that's been. Suddenly, the BMW 98, Jesse Crone. But as, we do, as we do that, what's up with these finished drivers? Uh, they're off the moment, but now the new fastest first sector, the number one Audi, Christopher Meese. So calm, composed, and measured when spoken to down in the pits. He's out making it work very well indeed out on the circuit. New target time, 1 minute 23.971 is what he needs to achieve if he's going to topple that 98 BMW crew. Now, that's got to be a fresh set of rubber on the BMW. It doesn't matter. Currently, that BMW, quickest of all, the only driver 
car preparing to break into the one minute 23s. We are anticipating seeing low one minute 23s. Maybe that's a little bit aspirational, but there's Christopher Mies. Well, let's watch through. the end of the lap, John, because he's set a purple first sector, his best second sector now coming up just behind a couple of other cars onto the start, finish straight. Will he goes top? He goes second fastest now. Point, well, again, point two of a second covers the top three. It's the 98 BMW, head of that car, the number one Audi, and the 84 Mercedes, which is still in the pit lane. Looking to see who else is improving. The sister car, so clearly they got changed stuff or put new rubber on the BMWs because Philip Eng in the 99 BMW is now ninth overall. Half a second down on the fastest pace. Christopher Meese looks to dive up the inside. The Bentley sees him coming. Stage wide, it's only practice. You don't need to make a big deal out of it. Sensible driving from both drivers. And that's what you look for. A little bit of cooperation. Now the Bentley's going to have a little sniff. Can it get a run? He's just letting his foot, he's backing off the throttle. There's no need to run up into the rear wing of the ID. And in reality, Pants and Abril uh, is, unless he's preparing for a lap and he wants to get into position, but if he's doing that, he doesn't need to run quite so close to the rear of the Audi. Right, a driver I want to bring in the mix. Dries Van Tour now on board the number five Audi. That has just gone third fastest. So it's BMW, Audi, Audi. And Dries has set his fastest first sector time. He's on the second sector now in the five Audi. And now I think you could be right. Van Tour, Abril looks so he's just hanging back, ready to really go for it. Five minutes, three minutes left on the clock. Here is the number five Audi sweeping around with Dries Van Tour getting right towards just on the exit of Sterling's we get the second sector time. Not his best. Three tenths down on the ultimates and maybe he's backed off a little bit. Maybe he saw the sister car in front of him, the number three Audi and thinks it might affect him. This time he's going to go for it. And the 87, Gugno he's up to fifth place in the back of Mercedes-Benz. A good run from the fastest of Pro-Ams. Yes. Mixing it. Van Thor consolidates his second position, 124.1. That was his quickest lap overall. Now just over a tenth and a half of a second behind Jesse Crone in the 98 BMW. So it's BMW, Audi, Audi, and the 84 Mercedes, the car that won the opening round at Misano, the opening round of the Sprint Cup at the end of March. Not bothering to go out and play for the final 10 minutes. Clearly very confident indeed. The 67 Lamborghini trying to pick its way up the order. Much better livery for them this weekend, but uh, not better pace. 17 Audi, that's in eighth place at the moment. Robin Freitz set his fastest first part of the lap. I don't know how much Danny was in the middle part. May be able to pick up a position or two. Only needs to find a tenth of a second if he can gain three places. Doesn't look doesn't have the body language, yeah, does no, it? No, the body language, you're quite right. I was just trying to get my head around. Doesn't look as committed or as comfortable as we have seen from the number five, Audi Dries Van Thor. So that car stays in eighth place. So Van Thor, second quickest on what is now his 26th lap. And nothing in particular is Frank Pereira, who did his time much earlier. They came into the pits, they decided... We know where we are, we don't need to go out and, and run anymore, we want to keep our tyres. There's three qualifying segments, two 15-minute segments, and that final 10-minute segment coming up later in the afternoon. And that's when we want to make the best use of the rubber that we have got. So into the final one and a half minutes of this second one-hour free practice session here at Brands Hatch for the second Sprint Cup round of the Blancpain GT Series for 2017. It's BMW top of the charts at the moment, looking for a late charge from Lamborghini. Will it be the 19 crew that picks its way to the front? The sister car, number 63, is down in ninth. The 19 is down in seventh. How fast is the early part of the lap? Not good enough to challenge anybody at the top end of the grid. So the chequered flag will be coming out pretty much about the time that car gets back round to the start-finish line. Isn't, isn't it amazing just how quickly the, the timing and scoring changes where we were talking about uh, Merkel Bortolotti, we had the interview in the pit lane and you have the focus and the commitment of Bortolotti's face and all of a sudden they are now down in ninth place. But what tyres they ran at the point they achieved their, at that point quickest lap, we don't know. They will have new tyres, obviously and how many of those sets they want to use in qualifying will be a decision for the team and for the drivers. But how quickly do things change? And I mean, the gaps between, we've now well, the top 20 are covered by 0.967 of a second. So uh, that's just, uh, I mean, blink, blink. Yes, and when it comes to qualifying, there'll be a lot of drivers who are thinking, can I just push that a little bit further over the curb at Stirlings? But we'll see what happens if you do. New improved second place time for Christopher Meese, 1 minute 
8.0, so still only Jesse Crone's uh, BMW, number 98, below 1 minute 24, but just 0.118 of a second back to second place. Super, yeah, Christopher super Lee's close. Really Checkered done. flag is out, and it was taken by the number 19 Lamborghini. I thought it would come out at about the time they came past, so 19 will end up in seventh place, unless anybody around it is improving. But on these... Uh, end of this session we're not seeing that many quicker times so certainly not the whole way around the lap we're seeing quick early part of the laps but towards the end the tyres are getting tired traffic might be in the way I think we're going to have Jesse Crone remaining on top of the charts in the 98 BMW ahead of number one the Audi with Christopher Mees at the wheel yeah, Romain Monti and the, Lam oh, the Lamborghini oh, sorry, pardon, the Audi coming up into Christopher Mees just on that literally the penultimate lap of the session up into second place and again that the very workman way that Christopher Meese goes about his job in the number one RD quickest of the RDs Dries van four literally what 41 hundredths of a second behind so almost you, know, you can almost call it. it's nothing so we saw Mercedes the 84 crew that won at Mizano show its hand it then concealed its hand parked the car in the garage they were fastest but they ended up Less than a fifth of a second down in fourth place overall. But that session at the end, and as if from nowhere, we saw no particularly quick times from the BMWs, then bang, suddenly Jesse Crone put 98 on the top of the timesheets. But this was a free practice session. Qualifying comes up at 4.15, so still a huge amount to play for. But what we've seen with the top 20 cars covered by one second, BMW might have a smile on their face, not yet shown on Jesse Crone on the right-hand side of the picture, but uh, for qualifying, it's coming soon. One of the, one of the, the, the strengths of the BMW... The chassis is actually an extremely good chassis combined with the aerodynamics. It you know, really does do what it's required to do. And maybe the nature of Brands Hatch is playing to those BMW strengths. We know the car won the 24 hours of Spa last year. Totally different circuit in, in overall context. But some parts, not a lot different here at Brands Hatch. But with the nature of the BMW, the nature of the circuit here at Brands Hatch, combine them and you've got a car that currently quickest overall. So here are the here are the is the running order the number 98 BMW top of the pile the only one beneath one minute 24 seconds then a pair of Audis the one and five crews didn't see the fourth run from Maxi Buch and Frank Pereira they won the opening round they parked up early just a two tenths down on the ultimate pace best of the prime cars by a huge margin was the 87 Acker ASP Mercedes in a fifth place overall very impressive lap from uh, Jules Gounon right at the end just a quarter of a second down. Still a few of the McLarens down on that second timing page. We've seen flashes of speed, uh, but not really from the 59 and 58. Saw it early on from the 42, but that's down in 20th place, just showing how close. There, within a second of the ultimate uh, lap in the free practice session, but uh, David Fuminelli and Lewis Williamson down in 20th in their McLaren. Not all the cars went out. 33 cars should have come, to, come out to play. But in the end, we had just the 32 because the number 11, 11 Kessel Racing Ferrari that was crashed 15 minutes into the first three practice session with Michel Bronicheski at the wheel did not go out to play. We also had the car bottom of the timesheets, the 24 Writer Young Stars Lamborghini taken for a batting, battering down the barriers on the exit of Sterling. So a lot of work for the crew there to fix that up. Ahead of qualifying, they may or may not get it ready, but hopefully we'll certainly have the number nine, number 11 Ferrari back out to play. So cars back in the garage. That one, BMW not being worked on. That was the car that was fastest. Jesse Crone lapping 1 minute 23.972 seconds. But for writer, Young Stars crew, a lot of work for the Kessel Racing crew. Even more work, perhaps, to rebuild that Ferrari that was crashed this morning. But right now, all thoughts in the pit lane focused on qualifying that will start at 4.15. But Lamborghini's shown its hand. Audi have looked quick. But BMW right now, top of the table. So let's take a look back at the highlights of the one-hour free practice session. Number two, the second free practice session, zero one on the time on the windscreen meant top of the charts, but that was a, a position that was swapped between many drivers, including the driver of this Lamborghini, Mirko Bortolotti, who really, really impressed. Great sideways movement there from Philip Quaif going through Paddock Hill Bend in the spirit of race Ferrari, and then Marco Hedister Kangas going out over the curbs, didn't listen to John Watson's warning, and it snapped away the Lamborghini Gallardo going across the track in the blink of an eye and slamming into the barriers on the outside. Pleased to report that uh, the finished racer absolutely fine, or so he seemed when he got out. The car, though, will require more than a bit of spit and polish. So the session was stopped, then it started again, and Raffaele Marcello was absolutely flying 
Yeah, well, the Aka ASP Ferrari. It's the sister car, Felix Serrales, got it wrong. No damage done there. Then the Spirit of Race Ferrari got it wrong, came back to the circuit, but it all belonged to BMW.